And then whatever happens in the outside world when it's released is um, it's kind of not mine anymore. You know, it's not ours anymore. When the film comes out, it's yours, Jake. You know I mean, it's how you feel about it. I, I like uh, we ha we gifted it to you. We just, it's our heart. It's how we care about. It. I go, yo, have this. Uh, Daniel, seriously, this is one of the most incredible performances I have seen in years, man. So seriously, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate it. Appreciate you. Um, obviously, goes without saying that you didn't have Fred Hampton to speak with and glean information from, but I was wondering if you could imagine just for a moment sitting in a movie theater with him, watching this film together, and when it's over, kind of lean over and say, okay, what did you think of this part? What is the aspect of the film that you'd be most curious to, to get his opinions on? I would not ask him about a film. <laughs> what would you ask him? His mind is so brilliant, man. I'd ask him about life. I'd ask him about like politics, about his viewpoint on 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 how to to kind of um, how to take command of your own psyche. You know, saying how to take command of your own mind for yourself. I would ask him about politics in Chicago. I'd ask him about the politics in Africa. I'd ask him about like how he, where he sees the Western civilization heading and in, in politically and how that affects black people. I, I, I wouldn't ask him about the film. That'd be an incredible question. Well, to your point, you know, so much of, of the narrative surrounding this movie is how relevant it is to modern day politics. And I can't help but think like, that's not a good thing. I don't, I don't like that this story still rings true 50 years later. Do you look forward to the, to the day where we look at this movie and say, it's a great movie, but it's not relevant anymore? Yeah, I'd love that. I would love that. I, 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 but it's it's relevant in a sense that I don't know. It's it's there's other things away from the politics that are make it relevant that isn't defined by. I mean, there's like there's an incredible love story in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm there's, mm -hmm. a, there's incredible. There's the, the kind of arc about betrayal is very Shakespearean. It's very Greek tragedy. You know what I mean, it's like and how the the dangers of apathy. You know, personal apathy, and like um and so there's away from that. There's all these other fact is there's all this stuff baked within the film that make it rich you know mm -hmm. so there are timely elements but there are also timeless elements is what what makes it um you know obviously i think fred felt uh, a certain or a massive amount of responsibility when it comes to conveying a message that was very important to him you have been a part of a lot of movies that also have very important themes and messages to them what responsibility do you feel as an actor when you take on a movie like this or a movie like get out that's about more than entertainment that actually has something to say. Just well, I just try and tell the truth, man. Like I try, I just try and I try and get out of my own way, get out of my own ego. And I don't really think about the outside world because I think it would distract the intimacy of whatever moment I'm doing. And then whatever happens in the outside world when it's released is um it's kind of not mine anymore. You know, it's not ours anymore. When the film comes out, it's yours, Jake. You know what I mean, it's how you feel about it. I, I like uh we have we gifted it to you. We just, it's our heart. It's how we care about it. I go, yo, have this. You know what I mean? And that's how I see it. It's kind of like, you know, and you've got to, you've got to move on and, and let go. No, it's the best damn gift I've gotten in a long time, man. So I, I, I appreciate it. Um, you know, I want to talk about the days on set when you would have to deliver those really incredible, those, those electric speeches. And I'm curious, how did you walk onto set and approach those days compared to a day where you weren't doing that? Is it, is it a different mental state or is it just another day? No, nah, it's not because I, I would see, I know there's certain moments when like there's the, the intimate moments, like the scenes when you have one line, they're usually the days that the audience really, um, they're the scenes that the audience can kind of, they're with you. Mm -hmm. You know, if you focus on the big ones, it, become, it creates an imbalance. So I put the same amount of attention and energy to all the scenes because you never know, there could just be a look that means like, oh, that subconsciously the audience goes, I'm, I'm with him, you know, I'm with him. You know, I felt that with Get Out, there's certain scenes that like that are like look like they're nothing. They look like they're anything. Like in the in the dinner party, and there's a look. If I did the look in the in a way that signaled that I was um, justifying them for kind of othering me, the audience would have left me. You know. So it's like that. Like they're as important as the the crying scene or as the like going um, fighting back scene. So I, that's how I saw the speeches and 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 all those other moments.
I love that. I love that. Um, obviously, it goes without saying that this movie, I think, is really going to hit home for us here in Chicago. In your research about our city, what is it about our city, especially particularly during that period of history, that really most stood out to you and was most interesting to you? Uh, wow. Just the, the, the politics, man. The streets politics in, in Chicago during that time was fascinating to me. Did a lot of research about that. And I just went to the, some spots that I kind of thought, oh, this is where this person was. This one. Like it was big figures during that time in Chicago in the streets that I, I went on a rabbit hunt with. And I kind of went, oh, I want to go here. I want to go here. I want to go here. But I love Chicago, man. I, I went there when I was uh, 16. I got family in Chicago. So um, it's, a, it's a city that's really close to my heart. Well, dude, if you ever need a place to crash when you're here, I have a very comfortable fold-out couch. All right, cool. You say, say if, you, if, you're, if you're look, if you're looking for a new best friend. Um, and finally, as we as we wrap up, I'm just sort of you know looking at the state, and we sort of touched on this at the beginning, but looking at the state of our world today, based on everything that you've learned and you know about Fred Hampton, what do you think he would he would think or he would say about about the world that is 2021 right now? Capitalism is the issue. <laughs> uh, you know, you need to fit, you need to. Um, I can't I can't speak for him, but I I I I can't speak for him. But I but I can see the consistency. I think can see that he in his in his words, the stuff I've watched, he called a lot of stuff that's happening now, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I think I don't know if his position would change. In the same um breath as Chairman Fred Hampton Jr.'s position hasn't changed. Mm-hmm. Mama Akua's position hasn't changed. So I think he would be in line with that sentiment. For sure, for sure. Uh, Daniel, I, the, this is one of the most incredible electric performances I've ever seen in my life. Congratulations on the Globe nominations, on the SAG nomination this morning. Very well deserved. And uh, really, it's an absolute honor to talk with you. And I really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks so much, Jake. I appreciate you. Right. Uh, Lakeith, seriously, congratulations on this, man. This is one of the best movies I've seen in a very long time. So I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Thanks. Um, so obviously, you know, it goes without saying that you did not have uh, the will, the real William to, to sit down and talk with this sort of glean information from. But I'm curious if you did have that opportunity to sit down with him and, and just try to get to know who he was and what his motivations were. What is the very first question that you would want to ask him? Um, I think I'd probably just want to listen more than ask questions. Mm-hmm. So let him tell me whatever he would like me to know. And um, yeah, just listen. You know, but to that point, when, when you are an actor who is uh, playing a man who did things and committed actions that maybe you don't personally agree with, do you have to try to justify those actions in your head? Or do you, do you have to get to a place where you're kind of at peace with what he did? Yeah, more just being at peace with it. And um, you know, just understanding that that was what the character felt was necessary at the time. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't. I think uh, justice doesn't even really come into it. It's just more like this is what happened. So just trying to make sense of it all as to not have a sort of biased view so that way you can approach it with an open mind and heart. For sure, for sure. Um, you have obviously been a lot of, a part of a lot of projects that are about a lot more than entertainment. They actually have something to say. You look at this film, Get Out, Atlanta, Sorry to Bother You. As an actor, do you find that you're more attracted to projects that have something real to say, or is it just kind of how things have shaken out? Yeah, both. Um, I'm attracted to them, and um, I've also just been fortunate to work with good people who wanted mm-hmm. to tell stories that move people for the most part so uh, yeah and and obviously speaking of get out obviously you've worked and worked with uh with daniel before uh when you look at the two of you in that incredible scene in get out versus the two of you in this film what's the biggest difference that you see as an actor and also just in terms of who you guys were at that time i don't know i guess the biggest difference is the story is different um and uh yeah i mean I'd like to believe I've grown a bit since I did get out, hopefully. And, uh, you know, obviously I'm speaking to you from Chicago, and this is obviously a very important story to our city. In your research of, of learning about this story, learning about this man, learning about our city, particularly during that period of history, uh, what is the most interesting thing that you came to understand about the city of Chicago? Um, I've been to Chicago once. Mm-hmm. When I was doing music, I, re- I performed there at the House of Blues. And it was very cold, colder than I'd ever experienced in my life. <laughs> but um, I, I learned uh, quite a bit about the rich history through, through this movie. I had no idea that 
uh, just the scope of what was happening at the time. And it's just interesting to me now to see uh, how industrious uh, in the civil rights movement was at the time. And some of the gangs that exist now in Chicago are a direct result of some of those civil rights movements, which I find quite interesting. For sure. Um, and, and finally, as we wrap up, there's a, there's a really profound video uh, of, of an interview with uh, William at the end of this film. And uh, if I remember right, it's the only interview that he did about the subject matter. What did that one particular video give you as an actor that kind of helped you figure out maybe who that man was? Yeah, it wasn't until I got my hands on the long form unedited version that I really got a sense of who he was better than, you know, what I got out of the, the snippets that were put into the documentary. Because mm -hmm. he was trying to save face and he was trying to appear like he uh, felt that he was justified in his actions. But it's clear when you watch the long version that he really didn't quite feel that way. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Well, is there something in particular between the difference between the long form unedited version and what was in the documentary that, well, can I ask you what the difference were that you felt? Well, you just, you get more context because you get to see how he's acting when the camera turns off uh, or when he thinks that the camera's off. And he's trying to sign relief and, uh, you know, he just has questions about what's going to be aired and what's not. And um, he actually says in the interview at one point that he felt bad about the things that he did, but he just had to continue to play the role. So, and did that soundbite not make it into the documentary? I'm not sure. I, I don't remember. I just remember there being a snippet. I don't think that that soundbite made it there. I'm not completely That's sure, though. That's fascinating that they wouldn't put that in there. Um, Lakeith, really, this is an absolute honor to be able to chat with you, man. The movie is is absolutely tremendous, and uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me, man. Thank you. Jesse, good to see you again, man. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing so well, dude. I got to tell you, you are genuinely one of my favorite actors working today, dude. Anytime I, I see your name pop up on a project, I just get so excited to see what you're going to do with it. So seriously, thank you for continuing to do such amazing work. It's so nice. Thank you. Um, so obviously, you know, you've been a part of a lot of movies, a lot of projects based on true stories. You look at this one and, and The Irishman and The Post and Vice. How do those experiences as an actor working on a, on a story that really happened compared to being in a film or in a story that's fictional? There's an added level of responsibility for sure. You want to do right by the, the person you're playing. You want to do right by the family. Um, there's also... I don't know, there's also something, I guess I've never worried it like this, but there's something a little spooky about it in a way that, that it's like, I don't know, knowing that all of this happened in, in, in one form or another, you know, not exactly like this, but it's, it's, a, you know, it's a very interesting process and, and feeling. Um, yeah, it, it is, it's, it, I prefer it when the person isn't so well known that everyone mm -hmm. kind of has an expectation as to what they're going to look like and sound like and all of that. For sure, for sure, that makes sense. Um, you know, I would imagine obviously during your research, I'm talking to you from Chicago, that you learned a lot about our city, particularly during that period of history because there's so much going on in Chicago during that time. What is the thing that you learned about our city uh, in your research that you found to be most surprising? Well, what a what a melting pot it it is and was, and also just the 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 race relations uh, throughout history there. I had no idea that it that it was so turbulent. And um, yeah, Shaka early on sent me sort of a complete history of of the happenings in in Chicago and uh, just sort of the way e even you know. And the different communities, sort of how how people wound up there, and um, also just just the whole just the Rainbow Coalition and all of that was something that was really fascinating to me. Um, For you mentioned the communities, I always tell people just by nature of the neighborhoods, Chicago is like the biggest little town in the world because it yeah. really does feel just like a little bunch of little towns kind of kind of uh, joined together. Um, yeah. 
believe it or not, uh, this year marks the 15th anniversary of uh, the first episode of Friday Night Lights, which I have said and will continue to say is one of the single greatest television shows in the history of television. I geek out with you every time. I, I'm the guy that showed you my football last time that everyone has signed except you. Um, I'm curious, what did you learn in your process on that show that you still take with you today as an actor? That was probably the, the best class I, I ever took um, because we were, we were given free reign to pretty much make these characters our own. And, and mm-hmm. you know, if we didn't like what was written, we could change it. There were no rehearsals. It was just like, you know, if filming a TV show was a summer camp and like the, there was hardly any supervision. And we just, it was such a, it, it was such a game, you know, it's like at a certain point, everyone started to really become more and more confident in their characters. And then it just became about, about throwing the other person off, surprising them with something. And it was, it just, it, it, the show also achieved a level of realism that, that I became pretty obsessed with after that. And, and, and I think it was because of the, the environment that, that was created on set. It was just so relaxed. So I, I became pretty obsessed with trying to figure out how to take that with you and achieve that same level of comfort, even on sets that aren't quite as <laughs> conducive to, to that sort of thing. Uh, for sure. For sure. Well, I told you, you know, I'm, I'm obviously talking to you from Chicago, but I'm actually originally from Houston. And so growing up and watching that show where it's basically taking place in my high school, I'm just, I mean, you guys could not have nailed it more, man. It, it's almost like, it almost feels like a documentary. Like that's how, how, how right you guys got. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm sort of curious, you know, I, I, I grew up learning a lot of great history lessons by watching movies. I was a big movie nerd. And so I would watch movies based on true stories. And that's how I learned a lot of things. And I feel like a lot of people are going to learn about Fred Hampton in this story by nature of this movie. But there is kind of this like slight and this snobbery of like, oh, you should like pick up a book. Like don't learn about history through movies. I'm curious as to what your perspective, like should we be allowed to learn about history through pop culture and through movies? I honestly think whatever gets you there, whatever gets you excited to learn. If it's a movie first that, that, sparks your interest who's to say that that's a bad thing mm-hmm. um i re- i read uh, uh uh so i heard you paint houses after seeing the irishman and yeah, it was a, such yeah. a great comparison well it's just yeah the, the, there's only so much you can fit into a movie and a movie's also three three hours and changed <laughs> and there was still a lot more that that you know you could you could uncover uh but no i always think it's it's a combination of of both i mean also you sit down and watch a ken burns documentary like they're so thorough that uh that's uh, yeah there's no way that's not that's not educational and you know valuable for sure his baseball one was was awesome yeah. uh dude jesse i am if you can't tell i am such a fan man and seriously it's always a pleasure to chat with you we've now spoken two times over zoom and one of these days we're gonna talk in person <laughs> i'm gonna bring that football with me sounds good man all right man take care good to see you We don't need roads.